Well, it's good Friday morning as I make this video as I was uh, just spot checking the chapter 11 uh, review. Seems like I had a lot of long pauses. It was the end of a long day, so perhaps I'll be more at my A game as I go through this chapter. As much as I love this chart, there's no questions on this on the exam, nor are there any questions off of this chart on the exam. I think this chart is worth you really spending some time with because this is going to give you a great foundation for what culture is and isn't. Uh, and there's probably at least two exam questions that you would you will be able to get correct based on knowing this chart well. This chart is simply uh, a reinforcement of the prior chart. Um, the key thing here is that values, beliefs, and practices um, are a huge part of what becomes a culture, and there are different sources of this. Some examples of culture, we've talked about Walmart, it's uh, zealous pursuit of low cost, frugal practices, strong work ethic. Uh, sometimes there's silly ways to do things, and also their commitment to meeting in stores. Nordstrom's nothing specific about that. We talked a lot about Amazon.com, how the culture was was very much a, a byproduct of its founder, as is true at Walmart. Uh, in this case, the founder is Jeff Bezos. It's a very high performance culture. Uh, it is one that's very frugal, data driven. And I think some of the uh, where the real gladiator aspect came from was Jeff Bezos' experiences on Wall Street and the way they did things, very confrontational uh, as opposed to very um, genteel, so to speak. All of those things go into a culture. Again, this talks about how value and ethics uh, are often the basis for uh, company culture. These are uh, the ways that uh, core values and ethics influence a culture. Probably worth being familiar with them. I don't think there's a direct question about this so much as it will keep you from selecting the wrong answer on some other questions. This chart is good to be familiar with in terms of what does it take to build a culture. And again, I don't know that there's a direct question so much as this will just make you from biting off on some of the wrong answers. And then a key point is that you have to perpetuate the culture because cultures do evolve. They are uh, they can easily go adrift and inevitably they typically go from good to bad and not from bad to good. The reasons cultures evolve is you get an infusion of new cultures, whether it's from a new business, uh, operations in a new country, merging with another firm, or you just um, naturally evolve as you start bringing in more employees, uh, you bring in a new boss, and things change. Again, the point is, is that cultures uh, don't stay the way you want them to be without conscious effort. They will drift and evolve if you're not careful. Subcultures are very important, but I know there's not a direct question about subcultures on the test. You might want to just look over this again so you don't bite off on a wrong answer on another test. This is an important concept both in real life and for the exam. It's strong culture countries. What's approved flourishes and what is disapproved gets squashed. This is another chart you're going to want to pay quite a bit of attention to. There's at least two questions talking about strong culture companies. So being uh, well, uh, very familiar with this chart will help you out. And this chart. This is a nice chart to be familiar with. Uh, it's largely a restatement. There are no direct test questions. The next several charts, there are some test questions off of. So what does constitute a high performance culture? And uh, what do we see from a high performance culture? Likewise, adaptive cultures. What is it that makes, a, uh, that makes for an adaptive culture? So you want to pay careful attention to this chart. Changes, I don't think there's a question uh, off of the changes, uh, but the big picture is, is uh, in an adaptive culture, the change can't compromise the core values and long-standing beliefs. Unhealthy cultures, uh, you're going to want to know uh, this chart and which of these they are, the, which of these they are, which of these they are, 
and uh, hostility to change. This is the antithesis of an adaptive culture, politicized decision making where decisions are made on facts, uh, not made on facts, I'm sorry, not made on facts, made more based on who likes who. Insular, inward focused. The problem here is that they never want to look outside. They never want to do benchmarking. They never want to look at best practices because they think they're the gold standard. Unethical and greed driven. That's fairly obvious. This would be the top of Enron way back when. And incompatible subcultures. Uh, this is where things just don't mesh and they have inconsistent core values. Here are the steps in changing them. I do not believe there's a direct test question but being familiar with this chart again will help you get some other questions. You do want to be very familiar with this chart. What are the substantive culture changing actions? And this chart likewise. And also aware of what are symbolic changing actions. And finally, um, we've shifted the topic from culture to leading and I and uh, you're definitely going to want to know this for the exam and also very real world about what I'm expecting from you from Globus. So there you have chapter 12 in a six and a half minute nutshell. Please remember that you still, so I've pointed to a lot of these charts throughout these past three um, review lectures. Uh, you might want to just try to shrink those charts down and put them onto your one page, uh, one side of an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper for your study sheet. I wish you a good weekend. Good luck. I'll see you Monday morning.